God had put this compulsion on me. And if you ever watched uh, Monk, that the TV detective, you know, he, he does things, he has to do these things as a compulsion, like he washes his hands, he's got to put everything in order. Well, what had happened to me, the Lord put a compulsion on me that no matter where I was, if I was at a store, a bookstore, wherever I was, if I would have saw a journal or a magazine or a newspaper, when this compulsion came over me, I would have to go home and take that information. Um, and I wouldn't leave without it. I would pay whatever, I would beg, I would ask the people. I would go home with it. And this went on the whole time that I studied with the Jehovah's Witnesses, which was about 10 months. And so after, uh, after studying them with about 10 months, now I'm going to have to condense this story, but the whole thing is an act of God here. And uh, I had the blessing for the first time to actually have this recorded at a, at a uh, conference uh, last month. And, uh, but it is lengthy, and, but it, is, it shows you what had happened. This was all God orchestrated. So the whole time that I was studying, I would take, whenever this compulsion came over me, I would take this information. I would stick it into my dresser drawers, and I would never read it. And I drove my wife nuts. It got to the point at the end of the 10 months that my wife couldn't even put my clothes in the drawers anymore. And so I'm going to make this short. What had happened? My wife, the only time that she went to the Kingdom Hall was they had one of these 144,000 spirit-filled, anointed Jehovah's Witnesses that they say is from the Book of Revelation, and those are the only people going into heaven. Well, this particular gentleman talked about a prophecy that did not come to pass in 1975. And this is, all this information is in my book, by the way. But they made the prophecy in 1968, and they said that God told their organization and their leaders that in 1975, he was going to come back and rule this earth. And uh, so when that prophecy didn't take place, he, they made excuses for it. But it didn't go over my wife's head, and she, she bombarded me with the fact that you need to check, because I'm really bothered by this, and I'm not going to let it go until you check. So... I told her that I was going to do this. I was going to check. And so I really lied because I had no intention to check if I was sold as a Jehovah's Witness. But what had happened, by a miracle, I got a route, a mail route in Santa Barbara. And on that mail route, um, it, now there's a whole story of how I got the route. It was a miracle how I got it because I was the lowest man on the totem pole out of 200 and about 17 people that took about seven months to get your own route, or seven years, I'm sorry. I did it in seven years. And so I got completely blessed. Now, on that route that I got by a miracle, if you knew the story, I met a pastor from Calvary Chapel. His name is Greg Meek. And this house, huge house, and nobody lived in the house for two weeks. So I told the supervisor that day, I'm going to, if there's nobody there at that house today, I'm going to send back all this mail. So that Saturday... I uh, knocked on a door, and a lady came out. There was cars everywhere in this area now. And it turned out that he was, uh, they were having a uh, prayer meeting that I didn't know about, but they told me about this later. And uh, gave him all the mail, and the pastor came out and said, you know, thank you very much for holding the mail. And I told him I fellowship at the Kingdom Hall. And he said, could I talk to you about some things that your Jehovah's Witnesses will never want to tell you? So to make a long story short, I invited him over to my house thinking, this is my way out. I told my wife that I would have somebody come over, so here, well, I'll just bring him over to show that I did this. Well, I did find out that there was a lot of information that they did not tell me. And as a result of that, I just did an in-depth investigation on everything that they said. And uh, about three weeks to a month after, I left the Jehovah's Witness organization. Um, actually, they, they blackballed me. I never became baptized. I was never a full member. I was studying with them. We never even got through one book. It was called The Make Sure of All Things because I kept asking so many questions. But the blessing for me is during that whole time that I was studying and saving all these documents, I never led one person to the Lord. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even remember any scriptures. 
And uh, to me, that now, in hindsight, I know that that was a blessing. So this is what happened. Right after I accepted to the Lord at Greg Meek Church Calvary Chapel, the, uh, soon after that, the Lord, I was sleeping at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, and the Lord came to me in a dream. And in this dream, that Gina, I could tell you, if, if you ever had a dream that you thought that you were alive and in this dream, that's the only way I can describe it. But what had happened is the Lord came to me and gave me specific instructions. And he said, I want you to go, get up, go into your dresser drawers and take everything that I've given to you out of those drawers, put them on a kitchen table, and I am coming to you. So I woke up from that dream and I thought, holy mackerel. I mean, I thought this was, you know, I was real. And I was so taken by it that I could, I had a hard time getting back to sleep. So I'm sitting up in bed. My wife is right next to me sleeping soundly. Now, this happened again, only this time I'm, way, I'm wide awake. And I heard the voice of the Lord in my room giving me the same instructions that I had just gotten in this dream. And gee, I started to shake, physically shake, because I thought I was having an earth breakdown. I never, I didn't even know the voice of the Holy Spirit. I never heard it before. I didn't know what it was. All I thought, I, I heard this voice, and it was telling me to do something, and I was shaking, and it wouldn't stop, so I said, okay. So I got up. My wife never woke up. I took everything out of the dresser drawers, came back, put everything on the table, sat down there shaking, because I thought I was having a breakdown. So as I was sitting there, the Lord told me, he came to me, uh, I, again, I want to say I didn't see him, but he was speaking to me, and he said, I have, I'm setting you out. And I have given you my proof to show my people that I am coming and this is the last days in your job. You're going to go out and witness in my name. And so I said, Lord, what are you, what are you talking about? So what had happened, for three and a half hours, the Lord would give me a scripture. And then he would tell me, I have given it to you on the table, look at it. And let me give you a prime example of it because there's so many of these things I can't go through it in this one conversation. But in the Old Testament, in Jeremiah 33 and Ezekiel, it talks about in the last days, Israel was going to come and become a nation again for a second time. Well, I'm looking on my table, a Life magazine dated May 14, 1948. In the front of the magazine, it says, Israel is born in travail and hope. And it was the exact word for word from prophecy in the Old Testament. And I looked at it, and I got completely blown away. And the Lord said, mark it, stick it in your Bible. And I did. And I listened. He, he did it again. He gave me another scripture. And what had happened is every document, when that compulsion came over me for almost, that, almost a year, 10 months, a little over 10 months, every one of those documents that I had to take home turned out to be a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And as the Lord told me, he said, I want you to take, he gave me specific instructions about taking this information and turning it into a slideshow. He told me, take them in slides, I want you to put this together, and as soon as you're done, I am going to open the doors for you, you're going out. Then I knew in my heart, you know, when the Lord speaks to different people, I'm sure that they understand um, what he is saying. But in my case, when he started to talk to me, I knew that God wanted me to separate myself from everybody else. I knew that this ministry, I was supposed to never charge anybody. The Lord wanted me to completely rely on him for everything that I was going to do so that I would never be beholden to anybody. So that when people came to me, they would look at Frank Zamora and they would see the works of Christ because Christ never charged anybody for his word and the hope of the salvation that he brought. And so I knew in my heart that this is what God wanted me to do and it was a test of faith because in order to do this and in order to go out, you need money and try to reach people. But the Lord said, I am going before you. I'm going to take care of that. You just put it together. So I started to do that. Now, Maybe in another conversation I can give you the whole details of exactly what he did. But the first miracle that he did for me um, was the fact that I didn't even have a camera. I had no idea how to put a slide presentation together. And the Lord had moved Steve Cangelosi, who's uh, from Rochester, New York. He, he 
walking three thousand.